So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the FCI variance that's been granted to USMRA to allow non-compliant dogs to compete in the United States. Um, a couple years ago, I got into USMRA right about the time that the variance actually took a took effect, and I heard about it a little bit, but I didn't pay too much attention because as soon as I realized that a, I had a dog that was compliant to compete internationally and the lack of my experience and knowledge of the sport, I pretty much just said, okay, I, I fit the bill, so I'm good. So I just kind of brushed it off. But in the last few years, the more that I've become involved in the sport and want to dive deeper into some of the little details, I have noticed that this is a pretty big topic of debate uh, nationally because there's some people that don't have compliant dogs that are looking for a resolution with the FCI or, or International Mondial Ring Rules to allow their dogs to compete, compete in the future. So over the last couple of days and probably even closer to a week now, I've taken several phone calls, done a lot of Google research, and, and dived in some of the archive history of the exact letter that was sent from the FCI allowing non-compliant dogs to compete temporarily. And I have figured out that this is a pretty daggum complex uh, topic for sure. That A, it's hard to find information because it's such a small subject. B, there's a bunch of misunderstandings between people on exactly what compliance is and how do you how do you you know meet the criteria. And then two, also just finding information is almost impossible. I probably called and chatted with uh, six or eight different people and done hours and hours of Google research. So let's hop over to the to the information center here. And I've got some bullet points that I'm going to pull up and I'm just going to read directly from FCI's website and some from audio rings and maybe do some animations on what FCI is and how do you how do you become compliant with the rules that are going to take effect in 2022. So one of the things that we have to define through all of this is actually what is the FCI. Um, FCI stands for the Federation Sino. Gig Leak International, that is that translates to roughly the World Canine Organization. It is an international federation of a number of a number of national kennel clubs. It is based in Thuin, Belgium. Terrible at, at translating so. And it was founded in 1911. So what does the FCI do for us? The FCI has three sections: Europe, the Americas, Caribbean, and Asia. Africa and Oceania. The FCI makes sure that all pedigrees and judges are mutually recognized by all the FCI members. The FCI recognizes 346 breeds. Each of these is the property of the specific country. That is key because that's going to be in, in some talk later. Um, the owner countries of this breed write the standards of these breeds in cooperation with the standards of scientific commissions of the FCI. So through all of this, it's not actually FCI that's requiring this. It's the International Rules of Mania Ring. In the International Rules of Mania Ring, it is required for a dog to compete that it is recognized in the FCI registry. This is where, as I get more into this, where it starts to get kind of messy. So how does this affect US competitors directly? So if you go back and look at what I said before, each country's specific registry owns the, that specific registration for each dog. <laughs> For the U.S., the American Kennel Club, or the AKC, is that representing member. This is where we start to run into some issues. By, nef by definition, only dogs that can be registered by the AKC will be recognized by the FCI. So through my investigation, I've discovered that even a dog that competed and met all FCI standards in another country, if that dog moves or is imported or the handler even moves to the United States with that canine, it must be registered through the AKC. So essentially the portal to get to FCI recognition to play in international monitoring, one must go through the AKC. So whatever documentation has to be presented to the AKC to make that registration compliant. Basically dogs that are not AKC registrable cannot play in international monitoring. So looking at these facts here, where did the variance from FCI come? When was that requested? The best of my knowledge, 
through my investigation, there seems to be one point in time where all of this accumulated and the United States asked for a ruling from FCI on how this would have continued to affect the United States competitors. So to the best of my knowledge, early 2016, there seemed to be a big issue on how to handle dogs competing in trials and more specifically those dogs placing at the 2016 national event. So with this confusion, USMRA was hard at work and requested a ruling or an exemption on this matter to better clarify how this matter should be handled. So on January 22, 2017, USMRA was granted a five-year variance from FCI, an exemption of the international rule that disallows non-FCI registered dogs to compete at Mondial Ring Trials. With this new variance that was made officially on February 24th, the Board of Directors reconsidered the above decision and agreed to allow non-FCI registered dogs to place on the podium. We are in agreement that the competition should be open to all capable dogs and the five-year variance allows us to do this. This is the only variance of its type that FCI has ever granted. As an organization, it is important for us to be respectful of FCI and realize the magnitude of their intentions. This variance shows that FCI President Franz Jensen is committed to the sport of monitoring and is greatly assisting USMRA in the growth of the sport. This variance is temporary. It expires December 31st, 2021. USMRA is expected to be completely compliant with FCI international rules on January 1st, 2022. So at the time of this variance, it was estimated that 30% of competitors in the U.S. had dogs that this applied to. It was a big win for the sport in the States. This allowed competitors to train and trial with their current dogs and also allowed judges to gain experience in a larger pool of dogs. So how does this affect this estimated 30% of dogs going into the future? On January 1st, 2020, what are the options for these non-FCI dogs? The five-year exemption was designed to allow handlers with non-FCI dogs to train and gain experience. The simplest answer for these handlers would be to get different dogs. I can understand how this can be a touchy subject. I've seen a variety of handler breed preferences and personal choices keeping these competitors from being on the field in 2022. USMRA judges' hands can be tied as International Mondo could strip them of their judging abilities internationally if they continue to judge these dogs after the exemption expires. So this potentially could be a much bigger issue than just these non-FCI compliant dogs competing domestically. As USMRA judges are certified, International Mondial Ring could strip them of their abilities to judge trials, sign scorebooks, and also potentially affect decoys wanting to compete internationally. I've heard this idea a couple of times of, well, why don't we just create another sport that allows these dogs to compete domestically? Although this could allow these dogs to continue co to compete, I think splitting the numbers of a sport that's already a fairly low membership isn't good for anyone in my opinion. One thing that's been very consistent through my investigation is that International Monitoring Ring does not seem willing to budge on the subject at all. Now what the reasoning to be unwilling to negotiate is unknown to me. So a summary of what my investigation has found that any competitor in the United States, the country of residency, is what defines the organization that the dog needs to be registered through to meet FCI international compliance. One of the examples that I encounter the most and is easiest for me to research is Dutch Shepherds living in the United States. Being that the AKC considers the Dutch Shepherd as a miscellaneous re registration under FSS or Foundation Stock Service, it is considered somewhat a limited registration that does not qualify for SCI International competition. So a little bit of my opinion on this matter. I think all dogs should be able to compete in Mondial Ring domestically. Um, just because some ruling of International Mondial Ring, it doesn't seem right to make these dogs sit on the sidelines. Now we're all competitors of the sport and we must follow the rules that are given, given to us by International Mondial Ring. In this way, it's a little more specifically to judges and decoys that are certified by International Mondial Ring rules. I would love to see an agreement come between USMRA and the international rules to allow non-FCI compliant dogs to compete domestically in the United States. I've heard terms of being able to call this an exhibition class, but on the other side of the argument, you don't bring a soccer ball to a football game. So if the rules say that an FCI compliant dog is needed to compete domestically and inter internationally, with three years to go before this variance expires, I'm interested to see how the negotiation between the USMRA and the International Monitor Ring continues to go. 
Unfortunately, it seems like the International Mondial Ring is unwilling to budge on this subject, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it progresses through the year. All this information that I've gathered has come through private phone calls, personal friends, or FCI judges of the sport. This is a very complex subject, and the more you go down this rabbit hole, the more complex it gets. Keep in mind that any information that I've talked about in this video has the ability to change in the future. The intent of this video is to be more of a conversation starter and to get people to begin to educate themselves. I've only been in the sport for a little over two years now. I'm doing my best to learn as much about the sport as I can. Now please keep in mind that this video was not intended to be an all-inclusive understanding of the USMRA and International Mondial Rings ruling on the FCI dog compliance. This was strictly meant to be a conversation starter. The more that we understand the rules, the more educated we are as a membership, and the better we can compete domestically and internationally. This is a new series that I hope to start on this channel that is more of a conversation or newsletter. I hope to be able to keep track of events going around the country and news that applies to USMRA as a whole. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and down below there's a comment section. If you have any questions, concerns, or any comments on any information that was shared in this video, please comment it there or contact me directly at ringsportroundup at gmail.com. All constructive comments are welcome. I'd love to have a conversation with the viewers and any discrepancies in this video, hopefully we can take care of that. Now if you like the channel, please hit the subscribe button. I have a lot more equipment arriving next week that's going to allow me to do a, some pretty cool things in the future. I hope to be traveling down to a trial in about a month or so and do some more interviews and get some backlog of videos so I can make regular releases of these videos as much as possible. Thanks for watching this edition of Ring Sport Roundup and until next time, train hard.